Hello world and welcome to another video. My name is Don and today I'm going to take a look at the workflow for the new local adjustments in DxO Photolab 7. I was watching a video the other day that was demonstrating the new local adjustments in Photolab 7 and the video showed the local adjustments done in what I might call a more traditional way. Add the local selection and then, then adjust the sliders. I'm not trying to say there's anything wrong with what they showed, it's just that I've gone down a, say, a slightly different path and that's really what I want to share with you today, that path that I've gone down. So what I'm thinking about is breaking it down into distinct steps most of the time. It's not sort of an absolute workflow, but more of a general approach. Break it down into two distinct steps and keep the image cleaner to work on. Step one is defining and refining your selection or selections if you're doing more than one. And step two is then making the adjustments. But wait, you might say, isn't that exactly the same thing? Well, not exactly. What I'm talking about is a little bit different. I think the difference will become pretty clear as I proceed. So, of course, we start with an image. We go to the local adjustments area here, and we grab the selection tool of our choice. And we, of course, have some U-point based selections, like control points and control lines. And if you're not sure what U-Point is, I'll add a link in the description. It's a little beyond our scope here now. And then there are some more traditional selections, like brushes and a graduated filter. So I'll grab a control line and I'll add it to the image, kind of as I always would have done in a way. Um, and at this point, you'll see an icon marker on the screen, the icon being that of the selection type that I used. And with control lines, I need to also use this eyedropper to indicate what exactly I want to select. What's my selection going to be based on? So I'll just quickly add four selections to this image for four areas that I know I want to adjust. And I'm going to stick with the control points and the control lines for this image. And, and I'm going to rename them as I go to help keep them straight. Now you can view the masks if you mouse over them in the list or if you mouse over the marker on the image. You can also either press the M key or tick the show mask box that will appear at the top right of the screen and it'll make the mask stay visible and that can be really helpful when you're trying to refine your selection. If it's a U-point tool, the control points and the control lines, we can use the chroma and the luma choices to refine as needed. And the chroma slider will make the selection more or less sensitive to color matching the point that you've chosen. And the luma does the same thing with luminance matching to the point. So basically moving the slider to the right may be a bit more precise and detailed, but it also might not blend as well. And moving the slider to the left is a bit more general of a selection, and you may find that it overflows a little into other areas. But actually that helps it to blend. Really, there's no better approach that I've found than just kind of getting in there and sliding the sliders and seeing what they'll do on the image that you're working with. Sometimes I'll set the chroma and luma sliders and then go and make my adjustments, for example, like um, lift the exposure. And then if I need to, I can always come back and tweak the chroma and luma afterwards to see if it'll make an improvement. It, it saves me, I find, over fussing with the selection that it turns out would have been good enough for what I'm doing. So yeah, just a little tip. And of course, we can use the eraser uh, and or the other selection tools to add or subtract from the selection that we've done. Um, 
here, uh, for example, take away from the top grass selection, kind of mimicking that the top of the grass is getting slightly more light. You'll quickly notice that the U point tools, the control point and the control lines, can add and subtract from other U point tools. And the more traditional tools like the graduated filter or the brushes and the eraser can add and subtract from one another. Basically, the software will give you a little no-go icon if you try to do something that isn't possible. So, you'll always know. So that's making the selection. So, what am I doing that's a little different? Well, is how I go about the adjustment stage. And that really comes down to a simple click of a button. I go up to the tools list and I make sure that no tool is selected. Then I just make sure that I have the correct adjustment selected in the list, if there's more than one, that is. And then I go about my business making my adjustments. I think I'm borrowing this from the wine world, but I'm calling this the clean skin edit. Trademark pending. Not really. <laughs> anyway, for the sky, I'll add a little saturation to the blues and I'll lift the luminance a little using the HSL tool. Now for the bushes, I'm going to lift the shadows a little and then compensate with the blacks. It adds a little contrast in there. If you're new to DxO, you may have noticed the selective tones work a little differently to some other software. I'm planning a short video on using selective tone tools, so watch out for that. On the grass, I'm going to drop the luminance a little and the saturation just a little. And finally, with the tree, I'm just going to drop the exposure a little bit. So with my local adjustments, here's my before and my after. And as I said, maybe I'll just go up and tweak the chroma adjustment a little on the grass to see if I can improve that selection. Hmm, there we go. I just love this approach because I have a completely unobstructed view. And, of course, if I want to get back to my other view where I can see the masks and, and the little icons, it's simple. I just need to select one of the tools again. So what do you think? How have you been getting on with the new approach to local adjustments? Are you doing it like a little more old school or embracing the clean like me? I'd love to hear from you in the comments, and yes, I know from some of the comments that this isn't everyone's cup of tea, not to everyone's taste. Like I said before, I changed this big was never going to appeal to everyone, especially straight away, but personally, I love it with a capital L. So with that, I will say thanks for watching, and I will talk again soon. Bye-bye.